All right. Well, hello, hello, and welcome, everyone, to our BG5 Live. Uh, today is December 8th, 2020. This is episode number 82. And today we're going to take a look at two traits because we just wrapped up trait number five. And we're also going to then focus in on trait number 26. So we're going to take a look at patterns in trait five. We're going to take a look at sales and marketing in trait 26. So we're looking at a bird in the hand. So we'll take a look at what that means here in just a moment. All right, before we get started, Let's say hello to our panel. So hello, hello, and welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome, Natalie. Great to have you here. Yeah, happy to be here. Good vibe. <laughs> Great. And Rob, welcome. Hey, everybody. So glad to be here. Great to have you. And Chris. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Super excited to be here today. Nice. And Anna, welcome, Anna. Welcome back. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Great to have you here. Well, again, a, a huge hello to everyone who is uh, attending live uh, via our Facebook Live. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free uh, to type in the chat area. You can also raise your hand if you want to contribute as well. And hello to everyone in Facebook. Uh, again, if you have any comments, there's anything that you would like to add, please feel free to write in the comments. And welcome to everyone who's watching via the recording as well. Well, uh, you can also type in the comments down below as well. So let's get started. Great to see you all here. We've, we've already had a lot of fun just connecting and uh, getting things started as we continue our journey of transformation and change. So uh, throughout December, the theme is sharing and transformation. Again, today we're going to take a look at two traits. Last week, we took a look at focus right? The energy for detail and the collective. Um, interesting, if we take a look right here, if we take a look at where communication is right now, not just interesting because it happens to be in the nine. Uh, so that's with sort of the background uh, communication going on right now is what we took a look at last week with the core essence. Today, we're going to take a look at fixed patterns, which is trait number five. This is the fundamental attunement to the natural rhythms. This is also sharing. It's also connected to this logic circuitry uh, that we took a look at last week as well. We're also going to take a look at sales and marketing in the 26. Uh, this is the natural salesperson. This is very tribal. Um, what's very interesting, if we take a look here as well, if we take a look at the 26, um, it is also the background frequency as well. It's sort of the environment that we are currently in. Uh, so you'll notice the, uh, the 45 here in the grounding and balance and the 26. Again, we also have that in our future and past direction as well. So we'll also notice the uh, 26 here as well. So we'll be talking about that today. And uh, next week, again, we're going to continue that theme of the collective. So today we're going to take a, little, a look at the tribal, uh, but next week we'll take a look at ideas, that stimulation for reflection the behavior of self in the 10, which is individual. And again, that's when the winter solstice is, is when it changes into the 10. Uh, and then vitality in the 58. Uh, this is the stimulation to enjoy, uh, to, um, it, it, a stimulation is the key to joy and the zest for life. And uh, again, very interesting that it happens in Christmas. So again, I like to take a look at this perspective just so that we can, in a sense, see the big picture of where we are and where we're going as we move through this month of December. So again, we're gonna take a little step back and we're gonna take a look at what happened last week, right? We, we took a look at um, a focus last week and then last week we were also in these fixed patterns and rhythms. So just kind of thinking back uh, last week, we just shifted into sales and marketing today. So taking a look at last week and where you found these fixed rhythms or fixed patterns. So that's where we're going to start. Uh, anything that uh, any of you would like to add before we jump into taking a look at the, the fixed patterns in trait five? No? All right. 
let's start there. Uh, so I love I love this little picture of the the puppy dog waiting. So when we take a look at fixed patterns, it's also about waiting, and it's it's connected to the rhythm of life. So it's the fundamental attunement to the natural rhythms, and it's waiting as an active state of awareness. Right. So I, I felt like this dog really represented that waiting, but waiting in this active state, this active state of awareness. This is often what we talk about as well when we're talking about following our decision making strategy, you know, waiting, but yet waiting not as a passive thing, waiting as an active state of awareness. Um, and waiting binds all life forms together in the rhythm of life. And this is one of the traits that um, all living creatures have is this five. Um, and then um, staying tuned to your own inner, inner rhythms, especially um, if you have the five, or again, you may have been affected by the five if you don't have it, staying true to your own inner rhythms. Um, it's important to stay, or staying true to your own inner rhythms, say, say it that way, staying true to your own inner, inner rhythms is important to stay vital and healthy, um, always in the flow, right? This is one of the traits that I do have in my design. And, um, you know, this is one of the things, having consistent rhythms and patterns can be very, very helpful. And my puppy dog is very good at keeping me in my own rhythms and patterns, especially in the morning and at the evening. Uh, so, so another reason why I put the puppy dog picture here as well. And then what's very interesting with trait five is also culture in a small group. So it sets up the rhythms and patterns in a group. So if you happen to carry trait number five and you're in a small group, you help contribute to, in a sense, the culture, the patterns or the rhythms of the group as well. And if you don't have it, then you get caught up in whatever the, the patterns or rhythms or cultures of the small group is as well. So I'd love to hear from our panel and just um, some observations, anything that you noticed or anything that you want to highlight around trait number five and either how it shows up for you personally or any way that you recognized it in this past week. Well, I have the other side, but let, let's talk about the five. So it's really interesting that, um, I know you have the five, uh, Karen. <laughs> so, uh, um, so this is fixed patterns. And the other, the other side, the 15, is extremes. So I'm fascinated by uh, your ability, but it is not, it's, it's just your nature, right? But for me, it's, it looks like an ability. To, to have these fixed patterns and, and, and know that you are going to do this and that and then that. And so you can, you can have a plan, so to say, and also a schedule to your work, right? And uh, I remember from uh, um, in, 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 when I was in, uh, in corporate that, that we had these trainings of, uh, how did they call it? Well, whatever, you know, it's the planning kind of trainings, right? To plan your work and to work through your emails and to do this and that, and then to do a set time and to do blah, blah, blah. I never, ever could make it, never. It's terrible. I, if you put me in, in a box and in a, in a whatever, I'm not fixed not right I'm, i can do sometimes with my focus that we talked about last week like 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 10 12 hours really focused and then next day nothing or i can uh, decide i'm going to do that and then i do something totally different or whatever right i know linda linda brandwijk uh, with whom I, who is going to assist me as well in, in the beach five foundation courts in dutch she has the five as well and she can like say okay I do one hour of this and then I pick up a little bit of that and then going like that, I will work through it. I know you as well. You kind of have like for uh, for materials that we develop, like, okay, so I do a little bit of this, then I can prepare for my class and then I can do that. Oh, it's, it never works, but I'm, I'm always in awe. And especially when I didn't know about this, right? It's something you try to train. It's something how you try to... Mm with homework for your kids with whatever impossible for me yeah yeah and especially with having again as as natalie mentioned this 15 right with the 15 the trait 15 is about extremes it's about diversity and uh and so in a sense it's almost exactly the opposite yeah yeah thanks for sharing that natalie love it 
<laughs> How about for you, Chris? I don't have either of those. I'm just chuckling. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> chuckling and going, uh-huh. Yeah. I see how that works. <laughs> Both of them, you know, um, I don't know that I have anything in this moment, uh, to contribute except to just smiling and <laughs> watching, you know, the rhythms of things. And so, yeah, nice. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. How about for you, Rob? Well, so I don't possess the five or the 15 either like Chris, um, but I really like how Natalie put it because it caused me to take a look back on some of my life and, and how in different situations, whether it was work or school or even parents trying to impose this idea of fixed patterns on me as if we should all, you know, fall in to the one channel that everybody's on, whatever that is, right? So but I mean, it's, it's interesting. And, you know, me being an express builder, you know, I'm in year five of, of, of my experiment and I'm applying this stuff professionally and personally. And, you know, I'm an enthusiast. Um, I see this word weight and I look at this dog and I admire this dog so much because, and I know that this is not just the plight of the builder. Most humans are just awful at waiting. Because we've all been conditioned in, in, in our own each unique way, depending on where we live, etc., that waiting is kind of bad, mm. right? In America, it means you're not going to be the early bird. You're not going to get the worm. You're going to get the scraps. You're going to get what's left over. And there's all these other negative uh, connotations behind it. However, when you just read these bullet points and you understand that, like, everything is here for the other and everything and every person is on its own timeline by waiting you kind of take a step back and you are participating in that yeah merely by waiting but i will tell you that you know for me as an express builder initially uh, it was it, it is an active state of awareness it is it is very zen to do this however for me at first even though I don't possess it, it's part of my decision-making strategy to wait to respond. Mm. Um, at first, it was a form of torture, <laughs> right? Which is why I look at this dog who just looks so content, so active, so engaged in the moment. Mm. And I, I want to be that dog. <laughs> Love it. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Anything you want to add, Anna? Yeah. I uh, have this open um, and a 15, but putting the little picture of the doggy there, um, I notice for me, or how I understand this is about time and timing, mm. that there's clock time and, you know, we have work schedules and school schedules and the holiday schedule, all this stuff we have on our calendar, but then there's timing, which is the inner rhythm. And I noticed when uh, I had two wonderful dogs and they put me on a schedule, like you mentioned, uh, Karen, I had to take them out and feed them and this and that. Same with kids, you know, you get on this certain rhythm, but I had my own rhythm and so there was a kind of an interplay between that and then, you know, as the kids grew up and the dogs passed and all that, I didn't have a schedule, which mm. was fabulous <laughs> for a while. And then I realized, oh, I have to have a couple anchors here, mm. like, you know, a couple appointments, a couple of things that I do in a rhythm just to keep me in a fixed, it, it grounded basically. Mm. And on the other, a little anecdote on the other side, um, I have uh, of the visitors and they were up all night for the last whatever weeks. And I, I need peace and quiet and dark mm. and all of this. So activity in my house was driving me nuts. And we actually this week had a big conversation about that and sort of decided what our fixed rhythm for sleeping was gonna be. And 
it's this week this week this week <laughs> a couple of days ago yes this week so now we're on this whole other rhythm which mm. works for everybody yeah Beautiful. I love that. Really great example. And again, you know, whether you have it or not, kind of this is just this awareness of, you know, where there are fixed rhythms, where there's fixed patterns and where there's not, right? Um, and specifically, if you do have this particular trait, this is something that you want to get in the habit of, of having some fixed rhythms, some fixed patterns, because uh, that will also keep you healthy. Beautiful. Uh, Karen, and how does this show up for you? Uh, for me, um, it, it's interesting because it's one of my bridging traits. So I, uh, you know, so I thought, you know, overcompensating on the other side, uh, you know, trying to be very diverse. And so it's actually sometimes difficult for me to get grounded um, in those patterns and rhythms. However, I notice when I do get, get grounded in those patterns and rhythms, things flow much easier. Like I said, that's why my puppy dog is so good because she wakes me up in the morning and, you know, when it's time to go for a walk, it's time to go for a walk. When she's time, when it's time for her to get fed, she lets me know it's time for her to get fed. And so she, she, in a sense, puts me into this rhythm and pattern. Um, and like I said, I've, I've found that um, in recognizing that and allowing that to be, um, that it really has been much healthier for me and I can relax much more. Yeah, thank you for asking that, Rob. Very cool. I, I have to say, I love what Anna said. I totally relate to that sense of, if, I am, if I'm around people who have a certain rhythm and you know, I'm looking at people who have either the, the 15 and the extreme or the five and it's very fixed, if I didn't jive with that rhythm then I would rebel against it. Mm. But I also really love what you said on it made me realize that it's, it is um, like when, when my kids aren't here, like if I don't have mm -hmm. anything scheduled, I'm like, I'm all over the, you know, I'm like, <laughs> I don't even know what time it is. I'm just like, woo, you know, whatever. And, and it does help me to have these like little anchor things it's that, but it's hard for me to get into that rhythm. Once I am, I can do it, but I can fall out of that rhythm e very easily as well. So um, not having the five at all, or even the 15. So, um, so I can see we're adding things in there just as touch points that bring a little bit of a rhythm. Uh, I can like, it's like holding the drum beat, you know, yep. and, and just holding in a consistent beat so that you can stay attuned to that internal timing and not get sort of lost off the, that's why like in shamans, you know, shamans will drum, they'll drum mm. as the, so that it takes the person on the journey and brings them back. Uh, and I think about the, the five is like that. It's like the drum beat that allows us to travel um, consistently, you know, as we need to. Yeah, beautifully said, Chris. Yeah. And and Lisa was saying, uh, trait five, like the the rivet in the road, either you stay in the groove um, if it's right for you in the moment, or you get the heck out if it's not right for you in the moment. Exactly. Beautifully said, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, and we have one in the uh, Facebook group as well, Amanda. When I reflect on my unconscious uh, uh, five, fifth, trait five quality one in her um, grounding, um, and also in uh, la la la, Saturn, I, I'm not sure, I'm spacing what it is in Beach Five Life uh, aspect. Anyway, uh, and the captain going down with the ship and the grounding standing pose, and uh, what I would feel about timing in that moment. Uh, so powerful reflection to mm. what you share. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Very cool. Well, let's continue on and take a look at the trait that we just moved into, right? So keep that kind of in mind. Again, it's always interesting watching, if you will, the flow of how the traits move. So we've moved from this fixed patterns, this fixed rhythms, and today we've moved into sales and marketing. <laughs> so if we take a look at sales and marketing, this is the taming of the power of the great. Remember, we took a look at last week, the taming of the power of the small, 
right? Now it's the taming of the power of the great. Um, so you can see there's a different energy to it. It is connected to the willpower. And this is the strength and will to support the tribe, right? So in a sense, this is the selling of the tribe for those within the tribe, but also in a sense, the selling, you know, to get people be a part of the tribe as well. Um, this can also be, and remember, this is not only the trait for today, but it is also one of the traits that, that is part of our current background as well. Um, and it's going to be with us, I think, through, at least through January for sure. I haven't looked uh, to see where it is for sure, but, but all through January, we'll definitely have this as well, probably through February as well. Um, so this is also where memory is manipulated or where the past is selectively remembered in order to persuade or distract us from our fears, right? So something to pay attention to. It's the egoist. It's connected to, like I said, willpower. It's connected to the ego. Um, the maximization of the power of memory applied to the nurturing of continuity, Right. So also making sure in a sense, sort of, uh, you know, in in the sales, the continuity of the tribe, um, making sure that that the tribe uh, remains, you know, consistent and strong. Um, it's also the line between the truth and the lie blurs and the potential and possibilities are transferred into reality and sold to the public for a price. This can also be in many respects where sales gets a bad rap as well. Um, you know, this is, can be what we often think of as the, you know, quote unquote, typical salesperson as well, where the line between truth and lies begin to blur. Um, and those who carry this trait uh, are natural salespeople. All right, so this is trait 26. And uh, I know I have it, uh, Natalie has it, Rob has it. Um, I don't remember, Anna, if you have it. I don't think you have it, Chris. I no. don't have it, no. <laughs> so I would love to, to hear from uh, first from Natalie, or from Natalie and Rob first, to just to, if you have this trait, how do you experience this particular trait? Well, what I love about it, at the, so, it kind of sounds a little bit icky when you read it like this, but the thing is, and I, it, it took me a while to understand this, because eh? it, it's about manipulation, it's about uh, uh, persuading others to buy something, right? I hate marketing uh, in that sense, right? In, 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 because it feels like you just want to shove something down my throat that I don't want and that I regret buying afterwards. But if it's used correctly, the beauty is um, you are able to, okay, can you go back to the slide, mm -hmm. please? Yep. So you are able to, to use words and, and, and only tell that part of the truth so that uh, those that you are talking to experience it as a benefit for them, right? So it, you, you persuade them in something that benefits them. So it's not it's not manipulation in the sense in the negative sense. It's only using the memory that will have impact or effect on on the on the persons or the group you are talking to. So they perceive it as something that is really helpful, right? That's really and and that's the then it becomes a beauty, right? As something positive, but there is this thin line and as we have a lot of conditioning and people living their not self it may be used or it probably was used uh, you know in 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 the past uh, time more also in, in 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 not in a good way right in in more to really sell people on something that they don't really necessarily need or want or 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 have benefit from but in in the correct way it is really uh, to distract us from our fears, and I'm, I was trying to remember, but the uh, the fear of the the forty four is the fear of uh, the fear of the past. Yeah. So yeah, to to be able to continue onward. So whatever you have to sell will will um, not fear for the for uh, for for past baggage ca uh, 
catching up with you, but but to to be able to to go on, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, and if you think about it, you know, historically when, you know, um, you know, selling the tribe, when we lived in tribe, selling the tribe that everything's going to be okay. You, you know, yeah. you might be in the middle of a drought or you may be in the middle of something and, and, you know, working with this to not have or allow people to give up hope or, you know, or fears that may have come up from that, the past so that they can really work together you know, to make it through and to survive, you know, so oftentimes it was needed in the past to be able to survive. So everyone didn't just give up hope. And, you know, then the the entire tribe went down, you know, it's, it's like, okay, we're, we're okay. We've made it through before we're going to make it through again. Um, And again, as Natalie said, it can be used both in a positive and a negative way, but there really is the, the grounding and the necessity, the necessity of it, you know, in the tribal sense uh, to keep the tribe together um, and moving forward. If we take a look at what's on the other side of the 26 is the 45. Um, you know, so a lot of the role of the 45 is connected um, with this sales and marketing, you know, to be able to be the spokesperson for the tribe. We take a look at this in OC16. We have an OC16 class that's starting in January, and we take a look at, at these dynamics. And when you really see the dynamics behind the scenes and why it's also so important for a, uh, for a, a larger group, um, we can see how it, how historically it's been very important for the tribe's sur- very survival. Remember, the 44 on the other side is connected to the survival instinct. Yeah, thank you, Natalie. How about for you, Rob? So, yeah, I, I agree with Natalie. You know, sales, just to start it all off, it has a bad rap because it's been done so poorly to so many. I mean, every single person on this panel, everyone that's watching this right now can look back to a to a time where the either the salesperson was bad or they were promised one thing and delivered another. I mean, and, and then all kinds of variations. And when I look at this just as a subject or a talent or a, a trait, all of the training that's ever been produced has been a mentally based program. Mm. So think of that for a second, right? Um, And so essentially, I I don't think that those that sell prefer a profession or those that don't, you know, they're doing and don't want to, but possess the the trait of sales, um, they're kind of at a disadvantage, but it's, it's, here we are with good timing again, where now, now that we have this information uh, you know, here in our community, we can teach people how to sell as themselves, mm. right? You know, you don't have to be a Sandler Institute grad to excel at sales and you don't have to take another Dale Carnegie course on getting good at sales, right? You can, you can use your design. Uh, we joke about this, but use the colored parts of your chart to show up in the moment that's presenting itself to you and, and go with it. Um, and then, you know, for those that are buying, it doesn't have to be a mental thing. And when it's a mental thing, it's probably not good. Right. Like, but if it's a body thing and your body is responding and saying, yes, I want this product. Yes. I want this service. Yes. Is the time. Then that's something to look at as well. So I look, I just, I look at that dichotomy right then and there, the mental and the body, because everything that we do in BG five has to do with body consciousness. Right. Um, I like the, the bullet point where it talks about the egoist. So for this, for me, by the way, it's my driving force. Let's get this stuff out there, right? And and tribe, we're gonna be the best tribe on the planet. Like that's just naturally flows for me. And all of you can speak to this. This is what we talk about um, out, you know, in our meetings and stuff. But like the egoist, this is the guy or girl that stands up and says, boom, they put the stake in the ground and they're saying, we are going to conquer this mountain, blah, 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 whatever they happen to say in the moment. And if you happen to look at our post today for the Institute, it was backed by this trait. If you just read the verbiage, just read it all. It is, it is that coming alive. So there's no consequence. I think it's very, very cool. That's how it shows up. 
Um, and for me, it is kind of an egoist. I'm the first person to step forward and say, you know what? BG, BG5 smokes all the other assessment systems. Like I'm the first person to like just step right out and say it from yeah. an ego standpoint, you know, but I can back it up with Will. I've got it. Right. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, sales has also been known as manipulative, but manipulate, manipulate, if you look at the derivation of the word, it doesn't have a, a bad connotation. It's just a word, right? That has been over the years pushed into this negative thing. But when, you know, if, if I'm sitting with an individual, let's just say that they're taking a look at uh, the foundation course for the first time, okay? And let's say they're a coach or a counselor or a therapist or a consultant, and they're, they've never seen this before, but they're really intrigued by it. I'm going to find out more about what they know, part of their memory, or what are their experiences have been in the past to relate it to now and also to help them relate to what do you currently have versus what we have and how that might help you in your trajectory moving forward. So I'd, I'd like to encourage everybody to, to, to take a look at how manipulating can also be positive, can be helpful, Yep. right? Because when I look at it, um, it's, it's altruism is what it is. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. You know, and, and here's one of the things about sales. One, I mean, if you're taking a look at business, right, you don't have a business if you can't sell, right? So it is a necessary component to every single business on the planet. You know, you have to sell in one way or another. And I also want you to think of the, the best salesperson that you ever worked with, because there are really good salespeople out there that aren't trying to manipulate, they're trying to inform, they're trying to teach you, they're, they're educating you about the product. They're not forcing you to, to purchase it, but oftentimes, especially if you're going to make a large purchase, you want those questions answered. You want to be supported. You want somebody to walk you through the process, right? So uh, again, even though it may get a, a bad rap, it is absolutely necessary and it is a key to any business. And we're talking about business here. If you don't have sales, you don't have a business. That's so Next, true. Yeah. I'd like to add, you know, so um, I, I bring companies their most valuable asset, which is people, right? And we, we live in this ever increasing distracting world, right? Where it's texts, it's this, it's that, all start, sorts of stuff are coming in on us all the time. Tons of ads, tons of this, tons of that. Oh, look, a squirrel, right? That type of stuff. And, and sometimes people kind of give it back to me. They're like, just stop, like stop trying to sell me or, or it's almost as if they take offense. But then my response to them is I'm, I, I say, look, what, what company do you work in? I work in this company. You want their salespeople to do well, right? Cause then if they don't, you don't eat. Yeah. And then right. they calm down a little bit. They're like, you know what? He's right. And then it just diffuses the whole situation. But yes, if you can't sell, you don't have a business. Yeah. I, so I'm thinking about the word manipulate. And so we have chakras in our hands and they are connected energetically through our heart. So the heart chakra comes out and it, and it gets, this is why we have hands on healing, right? I mean, that we send energy through the heart. Manipulate really means to, to do something with the hands, to literally transform something with the hands, right? So manipulation, if we take it from a little esoteric spot here, uh, is really, our, where are we coming from? Are we coming from our ego and our mind, or are we coming from our higher self? That's also part of what happens here in the heart. So if we're connecting heart to heart with someone and uh, Lisa says, it's like the natural salesman sees the person's fear and overcomes it. Uh, though we're integri integrity consciously acknowledges the fear and gains conscious report, manipulation doesn't, right? Manipulation says, this is about what I want. I don't care what you want. I want to sell you my stuff because I want to make money. That is ego. That is the mind. That is an agenda. That is manipulating the situation to get one's own needs and you know bottom line met versus what we're talking about here is this conscious, co-created and massaged conversation that truly serves the other. 
And I love what Leanna says. She has a couple things that she says there. She goes, I love my 26 because I enjoy creating things that people really want that excites them and creates a story that offers them a beneficial energy. I use my integrity with this one where I only create what I would love. I love that. That's so beautiful. Like she creates what she would love and then she shares it. And if people want it, they want it. And if they don't, they don't, you know? And she even says like, if it, if it resonates with you, great. Here's how you get it. If not, she goes, I just create something new. I think that's so, so great. And she just learns from it. And, um, it's anyway, that was my thought about manipulation when you were talking about it and how that really comes down to frequency. Are you in the higher vibrational state of manipulation, uh, which is coming from the higher self and really the conscious connection with the other and what's in their highest and best good? Or are you coming from the lower frequency, from the shadow? And, um, you know, manipulation isn't bad in and of itself. You know, and, it, and it's interesting, as you say that, Chris, I'm just thinking, you know, both the traits that we're looking at right now are all in this area of transformation, right? How do you transform through rhythms and patterns? How do you transform, you know, transform yourself and transform others through sales, through marketing, through manipulation, through, you know, both the good side and the bad side, you know, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways that, you know, it, whenever you purchase something, right, you're, you're transformed in some way because you now have something that you didn't have in the past. Exactly. Exactly. I also like what uh, Liana says um, in, in psychotherapy, we looked at manipulation as a conscious direction of intention. So that's beautifully put as well. Mm. And, and, and then she continues, yes, the frequency is so clear, Chris. You know, let's be clear. Every frequency offered uh, or sold will find a buyer who matches that frequency. Right. If we're exactly. selling in shadow, we will have buyers who buy from shadow. I call it shadow boxing. If we mm. are selling from shadow, we will have buyers who will buy from shadow. And if you sell from clarity and a high frequency, you will have high frequency buyers just watch all the time you know you'll see oh the, this doesn't work and it's like well did you buy from shadow and where was the the person i mean it's, it's subtle but it can happen yep exactly beautiful shadow boxing <laughs> yes i'm not to um the heart has to do with love mm. you know and warmth and the 26 is in a fire sign of sagittarius this is and then very known for being sort of effusive and community oriented storytelling and all of that fits in with sales because if you're in the frequency that's natural to you um, correct for you there's going to be a warmth and a sense of beauty you attract mm -hmm. through the beauty of that thing that fits for you not from oh i gotta have it i gotta fix myself up something's wrong and you know all this negative kind of manipulation when we're talking about the line part of what sales is about is acknowledging someone's dream and dream can be you know that in between space between a truth and a lie it's true for you but it's not quite physical yet it's something you're yearning for um you know back to that puppy you know you're anticipating you know something is there you're sort of in this position of waiting or accepting or um it's there and not there and when you have the correct frequency of buying or selling there's the beauty of the truth comes out. You, you belong to not just yourself, but to the community because you're fulfilling life purpose. Mm. Wow. Very beautifully said, Anna. Right. And it really, it really plays in a, um, you know, with what we are going to take a look at as far as the quality goes, because the quality is the one. So it's really the foundation 
Uh, so if we take a look at the quality here, um, the quality one is a bird in the hand. And remember, uh, quality one is about the authority. Um, so the elevation is the ability to enjoy the dreams engendered by accomplishment in order to avoid the delusion of unlikely uh, potential. Um, it's the ego which transcends limitation through dreaming. What kind of uh, tying into what, what uh, Anna was just saying. Um, you can also see the challenge, the accomplishment as a license for foolhardy risk-taking, the refusal of the ego to be satisfied. So the whole, uh, the whole saying of the bird in the hand, what does that mean? So the saying goes, a bird in the hand is worth, or, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Uh, meaning that, you know, you, we have the bird in the hand, we have, you know, we have a, a bird, it's really more of, you know, hunting, right? So you've, you've captured a, a bird, um, that's going to be worth more than, you know, two that you haven't been able to, to capture or, or to get. And so it's really, you know, what, what is the accomplishment that you have? Um, and so to enjoy the dream engendered by accomplishment, right? So it is an accomplishment. The bird in the hand is something that you actually have accomplished versus this dream that's sort of outside. And the challenge, of course, is the uh, accomplishment is a license for foolhardy, hardy, uh, foolhardy risk taking. Like, oh, well, why, why just have this one when I can have two and let go of the one to try to get the two? And, you know, you may end up with nothing. So, yeah, I'd love to hear from our panel what uh, what comes forth for you or what you see in this. Well, I think it's it is that whole. It's like it's, it comes to gratitude and mm -hmm. to a recognition of what we do have instead of like, oh yeah yeah yeah, I I want that more like more and more and more instead of just going wow what do I have and how can I how can I cherish this and build it and expand, but not take this for granted, not, you know, just dismiss this because it's one and there might be two or three or 500 over here. Um, it's like, how do you, how do you respect and hold all of it? So that's kind of how I'm just seeing that. And, and uh, you know, just even thinking, well, I, I was just talking with someone today and it's, uh, who was saying, oh, I had the, I didn't have this great launch, you know, I had all these people there, but it didn't, you know, didn't pan out and, you know, didn't have the sales that I had expected. And it was like, um, you know, it's a friend of mine and, and, and yet there's this record, you know, there was also this place of, well, what did happen? What was the beauty that happened? And what did you learn? And what, what actually is coming as a result of that that you can't see because you were looking for this result over here and not able to see the result that actually came that you weren't expecting because you were had an expectation over here, that type of um, energy. Yeah. Again, that's the mind, like Rob was talking about. That's the mind trying to sell and figure it out and be strategic instead of coming from that heart. Yeah, exactly back around to that um this word authority when you're using your strategy and authority your decision making strategy you can't go wrong mm. it, it may not get you the gazillion sales or whatever you were after but you can't go wrong because something still is going to come in and when you're quote, marketing, selling to your particular niche of people, they're going to choose what's correct for them. You're going to put it out in a way that's correct for you. And there's automatically a um, relationship established there. There's already a communication going on. A, a, and sometimes people will just listen or read your marketing material and we're back to timing and rhythm it may not be their time yet to buy from you maybe they need to listen to you or more or something else needs to happen in their life and then they if if you're re, if they're really in your niche and you're really marketing to the correct people people are going to come in at the right time yeah really great point anna
you know, I, I was also thinking in what both you and, and Chris just said, you know, if you think about this, the bird in the hand, when we're taking a look at it, you know, from the sales and marketing perspective, you can, you know, it's like really taking care of the clients that you have as well. And you may think, oh, you know, I want to get these clients over here. And you spend all your time getting the, trying to get these clients over here, where if you just take care of this client, they may be the client that refers hundreds of people to you, but because you didn't take care of them, right? They went someplace else. So it's in a sense, really taking care of you know, what is truly there, you know, who your clients truly are. And when you take care of them, right, in, in a sense, you know, there you, you never know, um, you know, who's going to then refer you or uh, leads to more. And, and again, it goes, comes back to that, uh, that authenticity as well. Yeah. Anything, Rob, you'd like to add? Well, I, I'm enjoying what Chris and Anna have been uh, putting forward. When I look at this, I mean, the elevation language, there's a tremendous amount of wisdom there, right? Uh, the ability to enjoy the dreams endangered, engendered, sorry, by accomplishment. I mean, that right there, like just the ability to say, you know what, going back to Chris's example, I didn't have the launch that, I, that my mind expected, because that's all it was. It was either their story or they bought someone else's story. But I do have these people starting with us on the 23rd, right? And just being cool with that, like, but then here's the second part of it. It says, in order to avoid the delusion of unlikely potential, mm -hmm. delusion being one of the words that stands out for me because we're living in <laughs> a, a delusionary time if that's even the right word but you know what I mean you know what I'm getting at like it's it's that false sense of like I didn't have the launch that I wanted I've got these 10 great clients thank god somebody signed up and just be grateful for that right and then the ability to affect 10 people's lives who like you said Karen could then refer you on to tons but then pushing forward and going eh, if I can just get 10 more then my mind will be happy then I'll feel the mental satisfaction versus the body satisfaction if you're a builder, right? Um, to go after the thing off of delusion that could be unlikely. Mm. I mean, who, and, and, and so, you know, we have, th this is a whole deep subject, the subject of sales, right? Um, because salespeople also think that they're like the architects of control. I control my numbers. I can hit mm. that target. You just give me a few more swings of the bat how do you really know, right? Like at that point, the salesperson needs to be sat down because <laughs> they're, they're cocky, right? And they're playing the seat of somebody else. And if they were actually in that seat, they would never even have to work for money anyway. So like, have a sit, have a seat. But the unlikely potential and you forsake, I don't, pardon my grammar, everybody. <laughs> but you forsake those 10 people who sign up on your program. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I, I see the challenge side of this all the time. We live professionally in, you know, in the corporate world. This does not discriminate on any continent. It's on every continent. We're this metrics based society. Right. You'll be worthy as a salesperson if, if, if. And in some organizations, it's brought down on a daily basis, whether how many calls did you make? How many sales did you make? How many hours? Blah, 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 blah. And, and that's that refusal of the ego to be satisfied. And it's going from the management into the team on a daily basis. Yep. What a shame. Exactly. Exactly. And that's kind of the difference between um, top down and bottom up sort of business is this whole uh, regenerative culture that's actually ancient, but it's starting to return into our business vernacular and style. But it's that sense of satisfaction. Do I, am I doing what I love? Yeah. And your people know that they're loved and vice versa. They, the, the love goes back and forth. We can will that those metrics but is there satisfaction and love there? Is it generating 
satisfaction and delight and you know all of that yep exactly exactly well let's uh let's take a look now at uh at the celebrity that we have too just to kind of tie it in there i thought this was interesting um this is laurie i'm not quite sure how you say your last name i don't know if you guys know is it grenier griner griner yeah, Lori Greiner. She's an entrepreneur. Um, she is uh, also an inventor that became became known for her appearance on ABC's Shark Tank, uh, and she made free uh, frequent qu- uh, product pitching appearances on QVC uh, on the QVC channel. And she invented a plastic earring organizer early in her career that resulted in a profit of more than fifty million dollars. She earned $50 million on just a plastic earring organizer. (laughs) So talk about sales and marketing, right? So um, her life work theme is rulership. Um, With your social charm, you are able to market yourself as a leader by combining selective memory and personal touch, handshaking and holding babies, uh, with the promise of educating everyone towards a better tomorrow. Um, This is also uh, represented by today's politicians as well. Um, so I just thought that this was, again, just a, a perfect example of, of how this 26 can work. And, uh, you know, again, um, you know, showing this um, leader by co- um, combining selective memory and a personal touch. And you can see that um, in the, the ABC Shark Tank when you, when you watch uh, her working with, you know, different businesses that are, are asking or looking for an investment of money. Yeah, cool. All right. Um, anything that anyone would like to add, whether we have any comments in our, our Facebook, uh, whether we have comments in our live, or any comments here with our panel? We have so many comments. It's, it's been a, a really rich discussion. But uh, I liked uh, Lisa was sharing, uh, perhaps like uh, the, the thing about manipulation, perhaps it's almost like integrity is equal to purposeful or conscious alignment and manipulation is equal to pseudo or unconscious alignment. Mm. So, and, and well, there's many more, I, I, <laughs> but I liked it. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, very cool. Well, Beautiful. it has been a really a fun, a fun discussion and we're, we'll have sort of last words. And if you read through and if there's anything else you want to pull up, uh, we will talk about that in just a moment. Again, um, if you are new to BG5 Live or you want to take a look at your own design and you want to see, do I have this trait? Do I not have this trait? How does it affect me? Um, you can uh, download your own uh, career design. Uh, you can also, again, join us on BG5 Live. You can watch past episodes. You can see what the trait is for the day. So if you want to follow along, we're only taking a look at uh, trait one today. But again, throughout this week, uh, we will be in uh, sort of the energy or the frequency of this trait 26. So pay attention. And uh, this will walk you through the different traits. Um, Also, we have classes that are coming up in January. I can't believe January is just around the corner. Um, Can you believe 2020 is almost over? So uh, So uh, we will be um, uh, starting our classes here in January. So would love to have you join us. We have a a BG5 certification course with Natalie. We have a BG5 foundation course uh, with Banu. Um, I'll be teaching OC16. uh, And we have some of our continuing classes as well. So we would love to have you join us. All right, so to wrap everything up, I'd love to hear from each of you on our panel. And again, if there's anything in the uh, comments or chat, we'd love to hear about that as well. But what are some things just to uh, watch for, pay attention to, or be aware of for this coming week? Yeah, so I, uh, I, I'd like to point out to be aware of and to watch for. Um, just observe how you see sales show up in the world and where people are doing it from authenticity and and from their heart and that the frequency really uh, matches or uh, that you can feel it's authentic or where sales is just pushing because it may be uh, since it is activated that 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 there is more of this pushing showing up because people are affected by it and 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 pushed into their shadows right if they don't have it in their design yeah 
Beautifully said, Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rob. <laughs> yes, Rob. Natalie just dropped the mic. There's nothing I have to add that would be valuable. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. How about for you, Anna? I would just say what, and yes, I agree. Um, I would just say, just, you know, check your body, check in with your body, let your body speak to you. Um, and there's a little difference between will and being willing, whether you're selling, buying, um, willingness kind of lets your body talk to gives you feedback. Will can sometimes be very dominated by mind. So just check those things out. Yeah. Beautifully said, Anna. How about for you, Chris? Yeah, I, I had to agree with, uh, with Rob there. And I think Natalie dropped it and, uh, you know, I don't know, I think I'm just going to leave it and, and, uh, and Anna as well, just trusting your body. I feel like there's a lot of sales going on in the world right now. And, um, you know, it's interesting. I guess I do have something to say. So, <laughs> you know, it just comes in sometimes. I just, I have to let it channel in. Um, you know, one of the things that I will often do when I'm having a conversation with people is I will like, they'll say, oh, I want to buy. And I'm like, yeah, don't, you know, you have to sleep on it or, you know, really honoring your own decision-making strategy. And so one of the things that I will say is if you are looking to buy something, um, whatever the case may be, and that salesperson isn't honoring your decision-making strategy, then it's a no in my book. I just think it's a no. I, like what else, where else are they going to do that? So you have to understand your own and to really honor it for yourself so that you can make those clear decisions about what you're buying and what you're buying into, whether that's physically exchanging your money or or exchanging your time and your energy and your mental and your, you know, beliefs and that type of thing, if you're going to make changes in your life. So, you know, I guess I, I, that's what I always look for is like, does the person honor your decision-making strategy and empower you to make a decision that will work for you? That's what I'm always looking for. And that's what I'm always like hope to offer people. So I don't know that, that to me, it makes it sales a lot more fun. Yeah. Beautifully said, Chris. Thank you so very much. Yeah. yeah. Awesome discussion. Awesome uh, uh, feedback. It's been really, really fun. Uh, so again, you know, pay attention to how this shows up, where it shows up, and ultimately make sure you are following your decision-making strategy. And as Chris said, you know, also make sure that, uh, you know, that you're not, you're not being pressured um, in that way that, that those that are, you know, th that are selling um, allow you and give you permission to also follow your decision-making strategy as well. All right. It has been an awesome VG5 Live. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Each and every one of you and look forward to seeing you all next week. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.